as we mentioned, it is election day. Voting centers are set to open in two hours, and both sides of the aisle will be out pushing for your vote. And get this, for the first time in decades, Republicans could take control of the state's House of Representatives. News 13's Catherine Rizone is live out at Washington Middle School in Albuquerque, while people will be lining up in just a couple hours. So, Catherine, exactly how close are these numbers for the state house? That's a good question, Matt. They're very close. 37 Democrats to just 33 Republicans. That means people heading out to the polls today across the, the state could make a big difference. That seat difference makes for a close race. It's a huge deal for state house Republicans. For 60 years, Democrats have dominated the state's house. Republicans have been inching their way closer to taking back the majority. Political experts say there's a good reason Dems have been in control for so long. More than 100,000 more Democrats than Republicans are registered to vote. Here's a breakdown of the numbers when it comes to who has already cast their ballot here in Bernalillo County. At last check, the county clerk's office says nearly 41,000 Democrats have voted and a little more than 32,000 Republicans. Now, with numbers like that, it all comes down to who shows up at the polls today. They open up in just a few hours at 7 a.m. and they close at 7 p.m. Matt, back to you. Thank you, Catherine. Both sides have been pulling out all the stops this year to gain control of the state house. Coming up in a half hour, how New Mexico's race for control of the state house is now getting national attention. Crystal. A race to watch today will be for Secretary of State incumbent Diana Duran is facing off against Bernalillo County Clerk Maggie Toulouse Oliver. They have very different opinions when it comes to the issue of voter IDs. Toulouse Oliver, who's been at her job for the last eight years now, is against people being forced to show their IDs to vote. She says while voter fraud is a serious crime, it's also very rare and ID laws would only cause a bigger headache and hurdles at the polls. Now, as for Duran, who spent time as the Otero County Clerk and as a state senator before taking her office, she's strongly in favor of voter ID laws. She says they increase voter confidence and make for a fair election. Different polls have put both candidates on top at different times. Another close race, the one for U.S. Senator. Democratic U.S. Senator Tom Udall is seeking his second term and with a sizable campaign fund, but Republican Ellen Way is putting up some of his personal fortune to launch an aggressive challenge. Polls show Udall leading, but Way has been closing that gap and fast. Both are working hard to lure undecided voters. Now we want to know the breakdown of the latest ballot count here in Bernalillo County. So we asked, and here is what we are told at News 13. So far, the county has received about 22,000 absentee ballots and more than 84,000 people voted early in person. And remember, KRQE News 13 has you covered for Election Day. To read up on the big issues and to see where each candidate stands, head to our website, krqe.com. Click on Campaign 2014. There you will also find voting locations, a voter guide, and all of our election stories. And tonight, we will bring you live reports, campaign watches, and poll numbers as they come into our newsroom. We'll also have political commentary throughout the night hosted by former News 13 anchor Dick Niffing and political expert Gabe Sanchez. We will have continuing coverage throughout the night on KRQE and begin wall-to-wall -wall coverage starting at 9 o'clock over on Two Casa Fox. Coming up on 505 now and some other news this morning. The man from Hobbs who beat a woman to death and recorded it on a cell phone is on his way to prison for a long time. Yesterday, a judge sentenced Timothy Stover to 25 years behind bars. In March of last year, Stover beat and killed his live-in girlfriend, Candace Boone, in her home in Lovington. He forced two others to record the attack and did it in front of a child. And the man who was accused of killing a gold store clerk in Albuquerque will go to trial. And Will Gardner here was expected to take a plea deal yesterday, but at the last minute rejected it. Police say Gardner was caught on surveillance video in July of 2013, shooting Richard Glass during a robbery at the National Jewelry Buyer Store on Coors. Investigators say Gardner killed Glass because he thought the clerk recognized him. Well, this morning, 911 calls are giving us a better idea of what happened with a deadly shooting during a robbery in the South Valley last month. Listen to this. Some guy came in with uh, big machine guns and they took everything from me. And I had to get my gun and I shot back. Well, the clerk, whose family owns the Pajarito store in the South Valley, says two armed robbers forced everyone there on the floor at gunpoint back on October 20th. 
frightened worker later fired at the two robbers as they took off in their getaway car. Bernalillo County Sheriff's deputies say the men, Ruben Lucero and Chris Garza, crashed nearby. And then an audio from a deputy's belt tape. You can hear what happened next. Be back! back, back. <laughs> Before that, the clerk had hit Lucero in the arm and shot and killed Garza. Now Lucero is charged with murder because deputies say his actions led to Garza's death. Crystal. Albuquerque City Council has to figure out a way to spend $30 million set aside to lure Tesla here. That money was approved by counselors and Mayor Barry earlier this year, but Tesla picked Nevada over New Mexico in September. Council must now divvy up that money. They're tossing around ideas like a visitor center on Route 66, a west side sports complex, or a new police station. But the mayor's office is telling them to pump the brakes. We are in current negotiations and talks with several other um, primed manufacturing companies that have significant um, interest in Albuquerque. Now the Barry administration wants a chunk of that money used as incentives to lure those companies here. Counselors are expected to have a plan in about two weeks. Despite the deadly crash of Virgin Galactic's, Galactic's Spaceship 2, billionaire CEO Richard Branson is still vowing to move forward with flights to space from New Mexico. Virgin Galactic had planned for a spring 2015 launch, but experts now say it could be three to five years away. The spaceport stands to lose $1.5 million every year Virgin Galactic does not fly. New Mexico already shelled out $220 million to build the spaceport near Tier C, but officials still think it's money well spent. People keep pushing forward. You learn from, you know, every one of these things and you get better and stronger and you keep going. Now, the spaceport says it still has other tenants that will help fund the operation, but the state may have to dip into the general fund or spaceport may have to furlough or lay off workers to make ends meet. Now, here's what News 13 has learned about the crash investigation this morning. The NTSB has recovered all of Spaceship 2's engine and fuel systems. They say there is no evidence of any explosion and instead it appears something went wrong in the controls. We also know the plane's tail moved into a landing position before it was supposed to.